Hello, welcome to another in our special series in Sun Dragon Tips and Tricks on the Ranunculus, our April knit along. If you're finding this another time, I hope it still helps you with the Ranunculus. So I'm deviating a little bit from my usual tips and tricks format, which is to draw all these things out because I'm trying to make a series of short videos or shorter videos that can help with different parts of the Ranunculus. This is not meant to replace the pattern. Please go buy her pattern if you haven't already, because this is meant to work in conjunction with that. I am making two ranunculi during our April knit along. I have done a whole bunch with a lace weight version, but that doesn't work well for videos. So uh, I am waiting on my worsted weight. I'm using color changing yarn for it. Um, it's Juniper Moon, Cumulus Rainbow. I'm waiting to go on to each section until I have time, which is Monday, to film a few videos on the next steps. Some of these steps I may not film something on, but, but if it looks a little trickier, really, if you, if you take your time, these videos may help. You can do it. You absolutely can do it. Today, we are going to be talking about the short rows. I have videos on short row shaping in general for sweaters and why they might be done. It's to really shape how the front and the back sit. If you think about, if you've ever put a t-shirt on backwards, the, the front is lower than the back. Short rows are a way to raise up the back and make the front lower by adding more material to the back, by doing, as it sounds, not a full row. I have a German short row video already, but it is written for turning wraps and turns, which are a different kind of short row, into German short rows, I'm going to address how it's written in this pattern, but not just take you line by line through the pattern. I'm only going to take you through a few lines, because again, by the pattern, um, so that you understand what it's telling you to do and you see it. So let's get to it. All right, if you like the whiteboard videos that I make, you can check out the German short row video after watching this and see some of what's happening in this. I believe I did uh, whiteboards for that. If not, you know, we'll, we'll have to do an updated version at some point. The short rows are just to put a little bit of height more in the back than in the front to help the sweater sit nicely around your neck. And if you take a look at her pattern, she has, you. if you start at the center, she has a little picture that shows how these are gonna work, that you're gonna zigzag back and forth. You're gonna start close to the beginning of round marker, or she calls it the EOR, the end of round marker, and you're gonna start moving further and further out. It's gonna add more to the back than in the front. But we're just gonna go over how to make these according to her instructions. And since it starts small and gets bigger, that's the perfect way to show you without taking up too much of your time here. A German short row, it's a turn and wrap rather than a wrap and turn is how it's often described. And if that sounds complicated, just ignore I said it and work with me here. How she has it written, she says row one, I'm only gonna talk about a couple of rows here. She says to knit five and turn. So let's do that. One, two, three, four, Five. There's five. So now I'm going to treat this like I am knitting flat, not knitting in a circle. I'm going to turn my work around. It's a short row because we haven't gone all the way around. The next one says on the wrong side, so the inside is facing you for row two, SL-GSR. That means slip this, this first stitch on your left needle. It's the last stitch that you knit. Slip that back over to your right needle. To create the German short row, we're going to take the yarn and pull it up over the back of the needle. It brings the stitch underneath up, so it looks like there's a double stitch there. There's two stitches there. And then we need to purl. We don't want to lose this. If we yank this up and over and then just brought it back to the front to keep purling, we would lose all that work. So you pull it up and over to purl next time and keep this wrap that we're creating, you need to bring your yarn between the needles to the front so that you can purl and keep it a little snug. If you let it go too much, this becomes too slack and it's hard to find later. The other thing I tell people about a German short row is if you roll it or if you see a little X, that's, at, that's your short row right there. 
that's your wrap, your German short row. It looks like either a double stitch from the front or a little X from the top. So I'm gonna hang on to that, keep my tension on it. And then it says purl four, one, whoop, two, three, four. I'm at my marker. SM is slip marker. They want you to purl five. We're creating the mirror image of what we just did on the other side of the work. One, two, a little stiff here. So I'm gonna move some stuff up. Three, four, five. There's my five since the end of round marker there. And then turn means flip your work around again. So now the yarn feels like it's in a weird place. Now, this is the most important thing to make these short rows go well. The biggest thing about a short row is when you slip, because now it says SL-GSR for row three. But I don't want to just slip right now, because if I slip with the yarn in back where it is, I can't yank this up over the needle. I could try to go this way. It's going to get really weird and thick. When the knit side is facing you, the right side is facing you, before you do this German short row, you need to move your yarn to the front. The yarn must always be in front before you slip a stitch with German short rows. Otherwise, it's not going to function properly. And when the knit side is facing you, so when you've purled over and you're about to do a German short row, when you turn around, the knit side, see these V-stitches? The knit side is facing you. So you need to move your yarn to the front. Then you can slip. And remember, slipping 95% of the time, unless it tells you otherwise. Slipping a stitch means slipping it purl-wise or sticking your needle in like you're about to do a purl stitch. You're just, you're just not twisting it. That's the language. The language is trying to get you not to twist it. So slip this guy back over. Slip slash GSR. We've done the slip. The GSR is pull this up over your right needle. And again, it will look like two stitches. The next instruction on row three is to knit four. Now we don't need to move our yarn between the needles again because it's already in the place it needs to be to knit back. So I'm going to knit my four, which brings me back to the marker. I'm going to slip my marker. I'm going to knit four more. Follow the instructions. Sometimes the instructions, sometimes it will say knit to within four stitches of your last German short row. And then you have to kind of figure out what they mean by that. She has this really seriously all mapped out. Knitting four takes you to this crazy looking stitch. Remember that X I told you about on the other side? We're back there right now. That's your German short row. It says to K dash GSR, knit your German short row. And that means either treat it like when you see these two strands, you're knitting these two together or that you're going through the center of all of this. Either way, you're catching the front two strands like a knit stitch. If you look at that, we've got half the X over here and half the X over here, and we're going right through the center. You're knitting it. You're just knitting through the center. It might feel like combining two stitches, but it'll make it, don't worry about this. It'll look clean later on, as clean as a short row can look. So I just did my KGSR on row three, and it wants me to knit three more. It's just paying attention to where you are. And it says to turn. So again, change hands, let go of your yarn if it's gonna be complicated. Now row four, it's again, the SLGSR, that's making your short row. So you're gonna take this last stitch. The yarn's already in front on this side, yay. I don't have to think super hard about it, but I'm going to slip that stitch back over to the right needle. And then to create the GSR, we take this yarn and take it straight up over the needle. It yanks what's below it up above. The next instruction is to purl. So I need to bring the yarn between the needles and keep that yanking of the yarn right there. Keep that almost like a yarn over, but it wants me to purl seven.
that takes me back to the, the beginning of round marker. Anytime on these rows where it says to do knit or purl and then SM means you should be back at that marker. I'm gonna slip my marker. Try to keep track of what row you're on. I'm gonna purl four and do everything in that row before you move on so you're in the right place. Purling four brings me up to something that looks and feels really weird and it's a little more crisscrossy than before, but we still have our X on top. This is the short row we created last time we purled over here. It wants you to PGSR, which is to purl the German short row. It's the same idea. These two strands, even if they're crisscrossed, you wanna act like you're purling two stitches together or sticking it straight through the center of this German short row. So we purl those together. And then purl three more. This should feel like you're doing the same thing you did on the other side, just you're purling instead of knitting. Now it says turn. So I'm gonna turn the work around my yarn's in back right now, but the beginning of row five says to SLGSR. Remember, try to keep in mind, anytime you do an SLGSR, the yarn needs to be in front before you start it. So bring your yarn to the front, then slip back over to the right needle. The GSR is to pull your yarn straight up over the right needle and then follow the next instruction. So get your yarn set if it needs to. My next instruction on row five is to knit. And so it's in the right place, it's in the back. So I'm gonna go ahead and knit. From here on out, I'm just showing you a couple of times. From here on out, follow the instructions. It's going to have you do quite a few of these for the back. And then it wants you to do some in front. So again, follow the instructions and count correctly because you're going to place a new marker for your center front when you get there. So you can use that marker to do your, your short rows on the opposite side over here. And then she'll tell you to take it off when you don't need it anymore. I'm going to do a few more rows of this to try to show anyone who holds their yarn continental style how it, how it isn't necessarily different, but what it might look like if you hold your yarn continental when I get back over there. Okay, so a little bit of backwards on this. I'm on the row five spot where it says, it says to knit seven, knit your German short row. Again, that's, we've got two strands in the back that are kind of sliding in front and we've got these two strands here. So we're gonna come through the center or feel like you're knitting two together and grab it if you're continental. That's really, all of these are the same. It just might feel weird when your yarn is in a different, held in a different place. Row five says to knit three more. So let's see what a German short row looks like when you hold the yarn continental, because then it says to turn. Either way you turn around, you're just getting the needle that was in your right hand in your left and vice versa. So you're turning your work around. Row six says to slip and German short row. So if I'm holding my yarn continental right now, the yarn is still, the biggest thing is the yarn in the front. So take this last stitch, the first stitch that's on your left needle right now and slide it over to the right. And then we need to yank it up and over for a continental knitter. Yeah, continental's not my forte, but then you're purling. So for me as a continental knitter, I'd still bring my yarn to the front and then I would start to purl back. There are different ways to purl continental. This is the way I do it. Liz does it a different way. If you do Norwegian purling, that's a whole nother issue. Give me a call. And <laughs> I don't know if I'll, I'd be able to do a whole video on it. Um, but let me work over to the other side. Again, I just knit faster if I'm holding my yarn English style, believe it or not. But I'm going to get back over to where there is a German short row done 
on the pearl, moving from the pearl to the knit side and show you how that is continental. You can see my yarn starting to change colors here. It's so much fun. All right, so following row six, I'm doing my pearl seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then, okay. Set up. Same thing as on the other side, when you work a German short row, a pearl, a German short row. There's two strands here. I'm gonna come under both through the middle of this little X thing. And I'm just going to purl them. Not a lot of give to this cotton yarn. I'm gonna purl them together. Don't worry if it looks a little loopy, it'll get better. And then it says to purl three more. One. <laughs> Two. Three. And turn. And honestly, for me, I have to reset my tension once I turn. Okay, now the yarn is in back. This is the thing I was saying for the English style knitters too. Before you slide it, the yarn needs to come to the front. Hold it out of the way if you need to, so that you can slide that stitch back. And then it's going to go over. You're gonna go over or duck the needle under to yank this stuff up over your needle. And for me, again, I need to reset. I am not a, as proficient of a continental knitter. And I'm going to start knitting back, which we're on row seven right now. And it says to knit 10, that should take me to my beginning of round marker. The biggest thing when you're working a short row is when you turn the work around, make sure your yarn is in front, move it to the front if it isn't before you slip your stitch and then yank it up over the needle with either hand up over your right needle and position the yarn where it needs to be to do your next stitch. When you work the stitch, you really just wanna, when you come back to what looks like what they often call a double stitch, you wanna knit through the center or purl through the center. Or if it helps you to think about knitting or purling two together, the two strands that make up the double stitch knotty looking thing. If you follow her instructions, purling and knitting, the number she tells you to, you should end up at the German short row or where you need to make your next one. If you're ever off on that, something has happened and try to back it out or take a look. Just a quick follow up. I just finished everything on row seven, which is all of the short rows. And I'm back to my yellow marker is my end of round marker. I'm back to that. I'm gonna knit one more stitch to lock it in place and then show you that the German short rows have done this much on the back to raise up just the back and then see it narrows down. And if I flip this around, this is the section she said to put another marker. This is my front center marker. And see how the shallower, because they're wider short rows and not as many of them, have only added a little bit to the front, but there's side spots where there's not much from the ribbing. But I am done with my short row section. The very first row of the yoke section, she'll tell you to knit around and she'll instruct you where to hit those German short rows and combine them if you haven't already. And she'll also tell you to remove, RM should be removing the one in the front where things are shallower and keeping the one in the back where things are longer. There's more here. So thanks for joining us for the German short row video that is meant to help with the instructions on the ranunculus. Different short rows, especially German short rows, will have their instructions written in different ways. Here is the product of those German short rows. And as I was showing you in the close-up video, I didn't really say, here's where they are. You might find little spots where it's a little bit gappy, but overall, it just looks like you added more you magically had it be thicker in one spot than another. They will probably not look perfect. I have one side always looks cleaner than the other. 
and I can never remember if it's my knit or purl side, but one side of short rows always tends to look cleaner than the other with mine. And, but overall it's fairly clean and it looks pretty much like stitches just kind of miraculously come and go. There's no magic solution to have it look absolutely seamless, but German short rows are a pretty good one. If we look at the lacy one I'm making, we, we have the same thing. There is more up in the back. There's more stitches here before the fancy stuff starts than in the front as I very delicately hold this up so it doesn't fall off the needles. If I can, I will film another video or two today for some of the decorative stuff in the yoke work. Again, not meant to replace the pattern, but to help you all out. If you are not already on the Facebook Knit Along group. If you're on Facebook, we have the Sun Dragon KAL group. You'll be asked to uh, agree to be kind and supportive before you enter. And um, a lot of people are posting stuff over there. It's great. If you want to post stuff on Instagram, hashtag Sun Dragon KAL, so we can see it too, those of us who are following that kind of stuff on Instagram. If you'd like some of your progress shown either over on the sideshow, which is Liz and I talking about our projects or over here, send me photos or let me know in your posts that it's okay to share because I think it will encourage other people that they're on the right track. So, but it's only done with permission. Please consider subscribing to this channel, uh, like this video, all that good stuff to help promote it to other people who are hunting for ranunculus help. We'll return to regular videos with whiteboards and everything as there's time and space, but a lot of April will be dedicated to ranunculus assistance. Thanks a lot, and may your crafting be filled with joy and confidence. Bye-bye now.